Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we're going over all of the seasonal artifact mods for Season 18. I usually like to make a video like this every season, kind of taking a first look at all of the new and potentially returning mods in the seasonal artifact. And with the TWAB today, we actually are getting these mods to be shown to us a little bit early, so we're making the video today and going to be going over my thoughts. Starting off, we have some of our normal champion mods, such as Overload Bows, which is one of, if not the best, Overload option that we have, so Overload is going to be pretty nice to deal with next season. Next, I'm going to pair these two just because they've flipped every single season for the last three seasons, but we have Unstoppable Pulse Rifle and Anti-Barrier Scout Rifle. Both of these are pretty solid options for Unstoppable and Anti-Barrier, respectively, so already right off the bat, we have three solid primary type options to deal with champions. Next we have Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle, which is not terrible, but we do already have Anti-Barrier Scout Rifle, so I would definitely personally pick Scout Rifles over Auto Rifles in most scenarios where I need Anti-Barrier. And lastly on the first row we have Unstoppable Shotguns, which is kind of scary to use a shotgun on Unstoppables in most cases, but it is nice to have the flexibility and the option to have another special ammo type of weapon to be able to stun things, so it's definitely got a little bit of flexibility. Not going to be great in all scenarios, but is solid in some scenarios, and I think uh, with some of the extra tankiness we have now, and potentially invis on void classes, especially hunter, to be able to get up on things to be able to stun them with a shotgun, might not be terrible. Not the best option ever, but I think you can definitely work it into to some builds. Next we've got the second row, which these will unlock after only two perk choices, as we're going to kind of go over here. It seems like you're able to get further in the artifact this season a lot faster than it has been in previous seasons, so you only need to get two perk choices from the first row to unlock this second row. We've got a couple basic mods, such as Scout Rifle Loader on your arms and Sword Ammo Scavenger on your legs. These are going to be really solid if you're using a scout rifle or sword, respectively, but nothing game-changing or huge here. These are usually just a little bit cheaper than they normally are uh, when using them normally, because these are mods that always exist, but usually on the artifact, they will be quite a bit cheaper. Next, we've got Machine Gun Holster, which also already exists. I'm assuming it will work as the normal Machine Gun Holster works, not necessarily any faster, but I also assume it will be cheaper, just like the other two mods we just talked about. Next we've got Scout and Sniper Targeting, which this looks like it's a all-in-one type of mod. So that's going to be pretty nice potentially if you happen to want to use both of these weapons. It's going to be a little bit unlikely sometimes to run Scout and Sniper at the same time. They're kind of similar type options in terms of long range, so a lot of times you're going to want something maybe a little bit closer to mid-range to go with a Sniper or a Scout. But if you're using either of these, you can just use this Targeting mod and that'll be helpful, especially for PvP. And finally, we have Bottomless Bounty, which improves two origin perks. I'm assuming, and we also have Bottomless Bounty 2 right next to it, I'm assuming that at least one of these total of four origin perks are going to potentially be the new raid, well, new returning raid origin perks. That would make sense in terms of them not wanting to show it off. Um, possibly also the seasonal weapons for whatever our seasonal kind of activity and stuff is will be a part of this and be improved with these two mods. But we don't know anything about these yet, it's just saying that it's improving their perks. Uh, but if the perks and the origin perks tend are good, and these are weapons that we're using, I have a feeling these will be very useful mods to use. Uh, in the past they've had similar mods and they haven't costed a ton. Um, so definitely helpful, and especially if you have the Artifice helmet. These are sh uh, shown to be on the, uh, the headpiece, the helmet piece. If you have the Artifice helmet, you'll have an extra slot to slot one of these in as well. So definitely worth looking into once we realize and find out what these origin perks are going to be. Next we've got the third row, which only needs four perk choices to unlock, so your fifth perk unlock will be able to unlock stuff from this row. We've got Glaive Loader on the arms, again nothing crazy, but just a way to get that a little bit cheaper. Next we have Focusing Strike, which causing damage with a melee ability will grant you class ability energy. Again, this is a mod that already exists, so I assume it will just be cheaper in the artifact. Next we've got our Seasonal Combo Resist mod, which is Arc and Solar for this season. This is something that's been great the last two seasons with the combo, and again, I've kind of talked about it in the past, that probably means you'll want your chess piece to be on Void, just for ease of access, because you'll be able to use this Arc and Solar Resist combo mod on any type of chess piece, and if you happen to need Void Resist, then you can just put on Void Resist 
because your chest piece will already be on void. So a little bit of a tip there for saving some upgrade modules so you don't have to be constantly changing the type of your chest piece. And we already talked about bottomless bounty. So the last perk here is machine gun ammo scavenger. So if you're using machine gun, definitely gonna wanna use this. I believe scavenger is usually five cost for machine guns. So I assume here it might be one or two. Hopefully that would definitely make machine guns a lot more nice to run, make it nice and cheap for the scavenger mod. You could potentially even pair it with the holster mod two on uh, row two, since you'll have a little bit of extra energy cost there. So that'll definitely be interesting to uh, potentially push machine guns into the limelight a bit. And continuing to push machine guns into the limelight a bit, we have overload LMG on the fourth row here, which this, as many other overload weapons do, will allow machine guns to stun overloads. It's definitely an interesting option. I've wanted LMG champion mods for a while. We also have Thunderlord gonna have intrinsic overload this season, so it looks like with this mod, every single machine gun will have the potential to stun overloads. And what's really interesting about this, actually, just as like a first thought, is Xenophage is a machine gun. Uh, it does say uninterrupted fire, and Xenophage doesn't shoot overly fast like a normal machine gun does. So I'm going to be interested to see on how well Xenophage specifically will work with a mod like this. But if it does work well, Xenophage could be pretty nuts for stunning overloads and dealing with overloads all in one. So definitely keep that in mind. And then again, just machine guns in general, definitely very, very helpful with this mod, with the scavenger mod and with the holster mod. Next, we've got one of the favorite mods of many, many people when it first came out, anti-barrier sniper. So I know we talked about earlier, we have anti-barrier scout and anti-barrier auto rifle where I personally like scout out of those two. But with this mod, there's pretty much never a time that I'd ever recommend running anything other than this in terms of anti-barrier. Other than Arbalist, obviously Arbalist still exists and works really, really well, especially if there's gonna be other shields like Void Solar Arc shields that need to be broken on top of just anti-barriers. But this gives us a very, very viable and very, very strong option that will not require us to use an exotic. So anti-barrier sniper was extremely, extremely strong the last time it was out. I assume it will still be extremely, extremely strong. Again, obviously, we now have Arbalist, which is like the end-all, be-all amazing option, but this at least will allow us to have a really, really, really strong anti-barrier option and still have other exotics to potentially mess around and play with. Next, we've got another new mod called Bad Amplitude, which will be on the class item, and this will allow for damaging a champion with a arc ability to cause the champion to become jolted. Now basically Jolted is kind of like a AOE lightning effect. Uh, if you haven't read the Arc 3.0 kind of uh, tips and a little bit of a uh, preview that we've got the, uh, the other day. And this is going to allow for kind of a similar effect to what we had with Solar and Stunning Champions and Solar this season. Um, except now it's not even necessarily stunning a champion. This will just be damaging a champion with any Arc ability. So if we're able to kind of get our arc abilities up quickly with some of these other mods, with some of just the arc 3.0 stuff that we're going to have, and we can constantly use arc abilities, we may be able to get quite a lot of jolted enemies and quite a lot of jolted champions where we're able to kind of AOE around it, get a little bit extra damage uh, as well on the champion. This is definitely going to be an interesting mod. I think the cost of this mod will uh, will definitely play into how strong it is and how much we're going to use it. And it also just depends on like how much damage this jolted effect is actually doing, how long it lasts. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know about yet, but it's definitely a interesting mod. And a new mod, we always like new mods, definitely gonna be, uh, gonna be intriguing to try it out. And lastly in this row, we have two returning mods. First, we have Surge Detonators, which is basically just overload arc grenades for those that don't know. This mod is assuming it works, unlike the solar grenades that were very, very buggy, if not just completely not working this season. Uh, if we're going to be on arc already, this will usually cost two. I believe it costs costed two energy in the past. I believe normally the overloads cost two uh, for the grenades, but very, very, very solid option if you're already on arc and if there's going to be overloads. Super easy way to stun them. And finally, we have Inferno Whip, which this will allow for solar melees to stun unstoppable champions. We've also had this mod in the past. I feel like back then there wasn't as much use for it. There wasn't as much like dealing with ranged melees. And now every single class that runs solar for solar 3.0 has a ranged melee. Like Warlocks before 
could have a ranged melee, but that was like if you were top tree and like you really, really were running top tree Dawnblade and PvE. So now with no matter what melee you're running on a Warlock specifically, you have a ranged melee. Hunters always have a ranged melee. And Titans also have their Bonk Hammer, which is really, really strong and still will be even without Classy Restoration. So if you happen to be running Solar, I know this is an Arc season, so this would have been a... I wish this mod was this season. That would have been kind of nice. But if you're running Solar still and need a way to stun on stops, this is going to be a super nice option as, again, every class has a way to stun them from a distance and you don't have to like run up and literally face punch them. So super nice there. And finally, we have the last row, and as I've kind of been mentioning uh, the whole time, this is only requires 10 perk choices. I believe this season it required 14 to unlock, so assuming the XP is the same, which they didn't say anything about it changing, means we're going to be able to get to this row a lot quicker. And assuming also that the day one raid, I know a lot of people are saving bounties and stuff for the day one raid to unlock stuff like this, assuming that none of these mods are like basically not allowed to be used or maybe turned off for 24 hours during that contest modifier going to be a lot more possible and a lot more easy to unlock these mods before day one not necessarily easy if you're not saving bounties you're going to need quite a lot of grinding and even if you are you probably still require some grinding but at least a lot more possible and a lot more likely to get these mods before the day one raid or even just that like week one clear that you may be looking for so going on to the mods themselves we have quite a few new mods here starting with thunderous retort where arc supers do more damage when cast in critical condition or while amplified. So we've had a couple things with like that critical condition thing before, and at least for me, I feel like it doesn't necessarily proc very often. Like you're not necessarily gonna wanna like get yourself to a really low health and then super. Like, you know, it's possible it may happen accidentally, but it's kind of hard to do on purpose. However, the second part, the while amplified, that's going to be quite a lot easier and quite a lot more likely to happen. Uh, so basically the Amplified, there's going to be quite a few different ways to get that to proc just with the Arc 3.0 stuff, with the Fragments, with the Aspects, depending on your subclass, a whole bunch of different ways it looks like. And again, that seems pretty likely to do, especially for like something like Thunder Crash or Chaos Reach, I would think, that are already pretty solid damage supers, or in some cases very, very good damage supers. If you can get yourself Amplified before you pop one of those supers onto like a boss or something, extra damage, super nice. Definitely going to be worth running for like boss DPS at the very least. I would see that I would think this would be a just 100% include if there's anything where you need pure boss DPS. So, definitely an interesting mod. I assume this will also probably cost a good chunk of, uh, of energy on your armor. So, we'll have to see kind of how you can play around with it with some of the other mods. But if you're running an arc super, especially a big damage arc super, I would, uh, I would see this being a very likely to use mod this season. Next we've got Hype Train Conductor, another new mod. This will add two seconds to the Amplified timer and will also stack. So this is, especially with what we know, like this is one one sentence here, like this doesn't tell me a whole lot. It sounds really good, like it sounds like it can be really good, but A, we don't know what the Amplified timer is for like the normal baseline. B, I don't necessarily know exactly what stacks means like is this mean like let's say it was 10 seconds normally like you, you're amplified for 10 seconds when you become amplified this would then make it 12 seconds does that then mean if i became like re-amplified i would add 12 seconds every time and suddenly become like infinite probably not that doesn't seem right um but i don't really know what the stacks means then other than maybe it can just go above that again in our random example like 10 seconds uh timer but unless you're becoming amplified like just so incredibly fast, you're not really gonna like stack it above like that plus two seconds anyway. So I'm not I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe amplified can't be restacked, but also like how does this? If that's true, how does this work? Like how like how what does this mean? Like it adds two seconds to the amplified timer. When like when do you become amplified or like? This allows you to then stack Amplified Timer. Again, this, this mod is, with what we know, like with this one sentence here, is a very vague, in my opinion. Um, I'm really not exactly sure how it's going to work. I feel like it's very, has a lot of potential. It could be insane. It could be completely useless. Um, they do mention underneath this that they think it's, they think it's gonna be pretty good. Uh, they, say, they say it has a lot of potential for those looking to make a spicy guardian even spicier. So again, it being a new new mod and them specifically calling it out as one of the like spicy mods makes me think it's going to be strong. 
I just don't exactly know how it's going to work quite yet. Next we have Trace Evidence, and again another new mod. This will allow for precision hits on arc debuff targets to generate Ionic Traces. And so we know Ionic Traces will allow you to get ability energy back for all of your abilities, and this is just precision hits, this isn't even precision kills. So I feel like this mod is going to be quite good for if you're trying to kind of combo and get lots of abilities off, which that's kind of how Destiny is playing these days in PV with all the 3.0s, getting your abilities, chaining and getting a lot more abilities is really really nice uh, a lot of this will depend on like quite just about how much you get back from an ionic trace and also this will depend on if there is a cooldown and how long there is a cooldown on this i assume there would be a cooldown not like you debuff a target and then it's like precision hit precision hit precision hit precision hit and you just get like an unlimited amount of ionic traces while it's still debuffed i assume there will at least be like a small cooldown uh, if not, then it's like really, really nasty. Even if there is, like as long as the cooldowns are reasonably small, I think this will be quite good. Uh, again, the thing with this is there are like pretty much all these new, actually every single one of these new mods is on the class item and we don't know the costs of them. So even if this was really good, if some of these other ones are even better, it may not be something we use, but at the very least, like just in a vacuum, this mod seems quite strong. And finally, we have two returning mods, starting with Lightning Strikes Twice, and this mod basically allows for after throwing a Arc Grenade, you will gain increased grenade recharge for a short time, and any Arc Final Blows will extend the duration of this benefit. So if you're running something like an Arc Heavy or an Arc Energy Weapon, Forbearance, Forbearance please, by the way, if anyone does not have Forbearance, or if you do have Forbearance, get ready. Forbearance is going to be nasty, it is the Raid Grenade Launcher if you don't know what I'm talking about going to be insanely nasty this season, get ready for that. But this is a really interesting mod again, kind of goes with that whole ability to use more abilities. Uh, at least in the past this did cost 7 uh, back in season 10, so that's very expensive. But again, strong mod, definitely a solid strong mod if you're going to want arc grenades and be trying to spam your arc grenades out a lot. Uh, but again, depending on the cost of some of these other mods, it may end up kind of pushing you out of being able to use them. Maybe instead of using this one, you want to use two of the other ones that cost like five-ish, because you can use, you know, you can use two five-cost mods versus this seven-cost mod. Again, we don't know the costs of these mods yet, so that's going to be very impactful. And again, we don't even know if this is going to actually cost seven. They may lower it, they may raise it, um, may keep it the same. But again, definitely a strong option in a vacuum, but we got to just kind of see what options we have total. One other note I'd make of this is like maybe for if you're running like a GM type of content and wanting to run an ARC subclass and not too worried about some of the other stuff, just on its own, something like Lightning Strikes Twice and Surge Detonators, costing seven and two, assuming these are the same costs, would allow you to, you know, throw your grenade, stun an overload champion, and then with the Surge Detonators, and then you will also get that grenade energy back because you have that Lightning Strikes Twice. And if you are running an ARC weapon, you could really just have a bunch of grenades and make sure you always have overload. Maybe not even need an overload weapon in a in a GM if you're just running these types of things right here. And our final mod for this season is Sundering Glare. This is a mod back from Season 13 where rapid precision hits against distant combatants weaken them for a short duration. Uh, back in Season 13, as far as I remember at least, this mod did stack with other debuffs. And that is always really good. Anything that can stack with other debuffs is huge, like something like Tether or Divinity. I may be wrong or they may change that, but I'm 95% sure that it did stack in the past. One other thing I'll say about this is we do have like all sorts of long range mods and kind of weapons that it looks like we're going to be using this season. Stuff like scout rifles, stuff like anti-barrier sniper rifles, even machine guns can be used at a little bit of a range. So it's going to be reasonably easy-ish to practice, and again, stuff like GMs or something like a raid. Again, you need to be quite a distance. I believe it's 40 meters to be able to debuff a target. So in a raid scenario, kind of depends on the raid and where you're able to stand. Like most scenarios, I would say in a raid, you'd be, you could stand. Like something like Caretaker, you couldn't because you literally can't do damage to him from within 40 meters is just the plates. Although I guess the finals, the third floor of Caretaker is probably 40 meters. I can see that being 40 meters. And I'm also actually intrigued. I think, let me correct myself on that because I remember people using this and I remember using this on Tanix and I don't actually think you need to do damage. 
like, I think, at least if they don't change it and don't fix it, it's a, and it does say rapid precision hits against commands. It doesn't say rapid precision damage. So I believe if you hit a precision shot rapidly from a distance, even if it's immune, doesn't actually do damage, I think it will still actually debuff the target. That, again, this is a little bit of just trying to remember how it worked and a little bit of assuming it would work the same way, but definitely an interesting mod. Again, this one costed six back in that season, so some very expensive mods out of the ones that we know currently, which will mean we don't have as much energy for some of the new mods if we were to use these, and so, you know, we can't use these two mods that we just talked about together, uh, assuming they have those same costs, because that's 13 energy, but very strong options. Honestly, like, we have a lot of Again, multiple new mods that are very interesting. A lot of returning very strong options that are very interesting. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, to mess around with some of these mods, see which ones kind of end up being the meta or the end-all be-all this season. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's not even necessarily like a super specific, like classy restoration, like I'm gonna use this everywhere type of thing. I think these are just, there's a lot of really good options and you might use some in certain scenarios and you might use some in others, which, going back a couple seasons, the fact that we can now unlock every single artifact is huge for a season like this in my mind, because I think there's going to be a lot of flexibility and a lot of want to try some of these, and we definitely are a lot less punished due to the fact that we can unlock all of them. That's all for me today, going over the season 18 artifacts. Again, we will see these up on Tuesday. I will definitely be messing around. Maybe I'll make another video on some of these artifacts once I get a chance to actually use them. But I hope this video was interesting and helpful for your kind of thoughts going into next season. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.